tape number five, December 5th, 1995, interview with Mrs. Irene Rosenbaum. Tell me about your reunion with your brothers. After we came home, I came with Miriam, Leia, and myself, my aunt uh, Pearl Katz, and that's it. And a cousin, uh, Rosenthal, Malky Rosenthal. We arrived in Budapest. My cousin had an uncle there. He was a doctor in Budapest, so she went right away to, to him. It wasn't a, an uncle for me, just for her, father's brother. And then they told us, it was a school when we arrived, somebody met me from our city and said to you children, you have two brothers in, in Satmar, that's Romania, go home, they're waiting for you. All right, so we were there a few days, and then we started to hitchhike the trains till we came to a border to R Romania, we over there by the station, boys were waiting for the people and tell them where, where, where they should go, what to do. So I met them from our town, and he said the same thing, that we should go and we'll meet there. So we arrived there, and so we were together with the two brothers. We were there, and they had a kitchen, you know, but they were cooking. My the cook came from a village where my grandfather lived. He was very nice to us. And then arrived my little brother, Yidu. He was 15 and a half year old. He had on a white shirt. He was in a hospital. After liberation, they put in all the children, you know. And he just jumped out from the window, and he started to hitchhike home. So he was there. We were happy to see him. And the rest, we never heard from nobody. We never heard from nobody till they didn't arrive. Then came Yosef. He came also. He was in Dachau. He'd be here later, so he will, he will tell you more about his coming, and uh, then came home with him, two Rosenthal boys, they were together, and who else came? That's it. From my sister Frida, we didn't hear nothing. She was with a Rosenthal girl, Javi, and she was with the cats, my aunt, two, two daughters together. And after my sister wanted to see her hometown, so she went, we were in Romania, and where I come was Russian, the Russians was there. We were able to go home. She went with my sister uh, Miriam to, to Salish, and I remained at Satmar waiting for whoever comes home. She went to his, her house in a different city, Hust, she lived. And he, her husband was a furrier, and they were hiding furs a lot in some of the basements. It was fine, little, but they were, we were hiding in our house a lot of furs. We had a chimney from the store to the house, was once upon a time an oven, and they didn't use it anymore, but we packed up a lot of furniture in the Later on, I tell you that anyway, we didn't find nothing. They emptied it out. They find everything wherever it was hidden. So I wanted to see also my hometown. I wanted to go home. So I went home with uh, Yidu and Yosef, two brothers, and a cousin, Schmelke, and a Moishi. Yeah. And we, in my house, we couldn't go in. They picked up all, uh, you know, we had wooden floors in the store, and in the house, the whole house was like one house empty. They all breaked up all the, all the, they were looking, whatever they find, whatever they find. And the only thing, um, I remember when my mother sh should rest in peace, we had outside the toilets. And she had a, a diamond ring, and a wedding ring, that's all what she wanted to hide. The rest we gave in. And in the toilet was wood, you know, then walk in. So she, I was with her, she picked up 
that we picked up a wood and she was riding. I was the only one who saw it. And after we came home, I took one of my brother to break off the wood and I find it. Here is my ring, this, and the other ring, the band, uh, 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 my sister Leia had, she was married, she took it. Later when she passed away, uh, we took the ring, my sister Frida, she gave it into a jewelry. She caught, they caught it because it's very white. She t took for herself a ring and she gave me the other ring. After we were, we were in, in home, I uh, crossed the street, uh, uh, was living one of my aunt who, who had a very nice house, a big house, and the soldier used to live in the house. They didn't touch that house. And we went in there and we, we stayed there and other people also. That was like across our house, not far. The, my aunt, that one, was here, matter of fact, in Borough Park. They had a bakery. And my aunt came out just before, uh, I think so, 1938. She, she, last minute, she escaped from home with the children. Anyway, in that, when we were home, I was waiting uh, to rest, for the rest of them. I was in Salish, you know, Belki Sabalush. My sister wanted to, said to me, the boys who I went, to the, the, you know, the Gentile boys who I went to school, they all work in the offices. You want a job? I said, are you crazy? I should go work. I'm not staying here a day, but you here. You want to stay? Stay. I'm not going. I was so frightened from the Russian people. I couldn't stand them on the side from them. I used to travel in the train. But the boys, I was the only one. I had on pants and I kept. They shouldn't recognize I'm a girl. They were hiding me all the time. So frightened I was from the Russian. And uh, over there was a man who had a bank. And he was at home that time also, came home, probably, maybe he had hidden money. He came pick up. And he hired somebody a gentle boy, he didn't even have a right pants, so ripped up he was. He gave him money, and he took me and my brothers too, and my cousins, five of us. And we, at night, we escaped the border from, from the Russians to the Romania. And that guy, because by us, they used to, uh, uh, like from Romania, they bought schnapps to us to sell, and they bought whatever. So they knew already the site, you know, we had uh, the, the Tissa, we had uh, water, you know, a big, big ocean. But was side street be, where the ocean wasn't, we were, matter of fact, that night we went the whole night walking, and the, the, the corn was start to be dry, you know, you could hear the noise, and the Russian was on the bridge, you know, and we used to see him from far away, we were so close, we had to go that way home. We always stopped the noise, he stopped hearing noise and like this. We arrived to a village by the border and a little house and over there was a, a lot of girls who, a few of them who was with me in the lager and they said, oh, the cats and the Rosenthal are here. So they gave us food and they gave us everything. But that man was a very religious man. He didn't want to stay there, you know, with us, you know, with children. He was a married man. I mean, he was a friend of my father. So he knew already where to go. He, I'm sure he had enough money, you know, because he didn't go home empty. It didn't interest me, but, but uh, like this, uh, we escaped. And then we start to go back to Satmar. That was Holmi, that's a village by the, uh, uh, and then was another city was uh, Satmar, um, Satmare, you know, that where I met the, my brothers were there. So could, could you tell me about the train ride where you met your husband? Soon I get to it. Oh, I see. Anyway, my two sisters remained there for a while, and I just asked them how they escaped. They said they gave them papers 
they should go, lo go look for the family, and that's why they were able to come, come out. After we were already, all of us, just Frida, didn't, we didn't hear from Frida. And, and, and Romania and Kreuzverdam, you know, was uh, one of my cousin's husband. He was, um, you know, uh, a macher, you know, he was... Uh, Important. Uh, yeah, he did put together the group, the, the people to go further. And that, when we took that train, to, to go border to border. We used to have papers. They gave us the paper not to talk. We were Austrian, you know, and they paid up the, the guard, you know, the bridges when we passed by and then we were going. And then we met, I met my husband, my brother, uh, Sruel, was with me. And he ent introduced me the the introduced me, you know, my husband, and he was going with my brother, my sister, and in Budapest, first we arrived to Budapest with a group, and after they were with us already, my husband and, and my, my sister's husband also we met, and, and in Budapest, my sister arrived from Bergen-Belsen, and other two cousins, the Rosenthal and the Katz girl, that's all. And I said, I'm not going with the boys alone. I'm alone, and I have five boys with me. I have to watch them, and I have to. So she decided to come with us. And the other girl, she remained, because uh, over there she had an older brother. And I, he came, and I wanted she should come also, because two brothers of hers came with us. So she yelled, she, uh, she said, uh, the older brother came there in Budapest. He came home. And he, his name is Yosef, he's an Israel. And he said to me, listen, you're not anymore Bakatsish Rosenthal. We don't have to stick to each other. That's what she told me. My sister has to go to Czechoslovakia. Our boy is waiting for her to get married from our town, who liked her, but she was the third or the fourth child. She couldn't get married and he's waiting. So I stopped nagging her that she should come with me. All right, so that was, and then like this, we, we started to go further from, from one country to the other. And uh, then we came to Bad Gasten, and that, then we came to Germany, back to the, the American side, because we wanted to be remembered, good thing, lucky, we remembered my brother's address by heart, you know. In the United States. The United States. And that was, somebody told us not to go all together because in Budapest already we met each other because uh, they said we too many people and that wouldn't be good. And my sister didn't want to come with us, the married sister, Leia. She still, even they told her that he's not allowed, her like husband. her husband, because somebody was with him, but she didn't believe. She, she still was waiting, and she went to Czechoslovakia with Miriam, and Miriam met their uh, cousin who she he married. He, she got married, and we went away later on, she got married. And we didn't want to take the young boys, uh, Yidu and Yasev, you know, they should travel with us. We didn't know where we're going. So we divide ourselves, you know. M me and Frida and, and Sruel, Ari. Well, who else came with me? That's it. The four of us. Four, yeah. Came and we, we struggled a lot. That we heard from my husband where we traveled to Germany all over till we came and after uh, we were in a camp to the end already, Baknang, and over there they give us, we, we should cook ourselves because they didn't have too many religious Jews who wanted to eat kosher, but they gave us kosher meat and they, matter of fact, one girl was with us from Budapest, she never know how to cook. We used, we went to buy apples from the farms. 
and, and you know, and sell it for a quarter and a half. I don't know for how much. And she, we put her to cook. We got a piece of meat like this, and she took a pot, and she put in the whole meat in one pot, and like this we came, and they were so hungry that everybody's grabbing a piece of meat. That wasn't, we didn't have to slice it. We, we were very hungry. After the war, for a year, we didn't eat, just to travel it. One, one camp to the other camp, and wasn't too much food, no place. And uh, tell me about coming to America. Yeah, after when we were back now, that uh, like before Pesach time, you know, when this, uh, the American zona we were, they came in and they told us that uh, they wanna, they who wants to go to America, they should, uh, uh, they could pick up the hand, and. You have an opportunity to go to America. We wanted to go. We didn't want. We, we already left the group who wanted to go to Israel. You see, my sisters from Czechoslovakia, they all whoever left, they all went to Israel. They came in 1948, and two brothers was in the army, the little ones, you know. And when when we were there, and and. Uh, Where I'm up to, I went back already. <laughs> and, uh, well, you you um, you were in Baknang. Yeah, when we were back Nang, they they told us that uh, who wants to go to America. So we all, a few of them, and some of the people said, "You crazy? They will take you to America. Don't bother." We didn't listen to them, and we picked up the hand and we said, we're going. So then start to ask who has family, uh, parents, nobody had. My husband had a, a grandfather, so they put him down, and we had my brother here in the United States. Matter of fact, he was a, a soldier here in, in, in America. He ran away from the Czech soldiers. He didn't want to be a soldier. That's why he came to America. They didn't believe that he could come to America. He wrote a letter to my uncle, and people were waiting for the quota to come to America for years, and not even six months to come, and he was out in the country. Wherever office he went, everybody signed him. One, two, three people. My parents said, you don't have what to do anyway. You don't do nothing, so go right. So he wrote a letter, and he got papers. In no time, he had to go to Prague to get the, the visa. And, and, and he came back, like before Purim, he said, you see, that's the paper to go to America. My parents would never let them go. But they figured, you don't, wanna, you don't have what to do. You know, he wasn't working, he just went to the yeshiva. And he got the papers and he, he went to America. So tell me about coming, to, when did you come to America? We came in May. May Eight, May 20, we arrived to the United States. We came with a boat, was uh, 500 people. And here, uh, Mayor Dwyer was waiting for us. And a lot of music, everybody, and a lot of people asked us if you have where to go. They called us, they wanted to take us in the houses. And we had here a few uncles and aunts. And it uh, was awful to see family here. I mean, we were happy to see it, but we were awful to see what we left and, and who remained, you know, just Did, did they ask you about what happened to their, to your parents? Did they, did they want to hear the stories? Uh, here, yes, uh, not too much. They, I don't know. They, they listened, but they, like somebody, they didn't even believe it. That goes on. Matter of fact, we, we all came, even an uncle, who, who I showed you the picture, he came with us, the same boat, and uh, one of my aunt, he was a rabbi in Williamsburg, and they made a beautiful table, the whole family, they got together. Beautiful food, we just looked, we didn't see food like this. They had margarine on the table, and he said, what kind of Jews are they? 
that he, they eat butter with flies. So then they explained to him that's, that's not flies. It was very hard. Uh, one of my uncle was well to do here. And, and he took the boys to dress up. I had one dress with which I came. I went to buy apples in, in Germany to, to make a dress for a seamster. And I gave her apple, to sell the apples. I should have money. A very nice dress, and, and I didn't know never what they took away from me. After but years later, I thought maybe they think I have lies. And that's why they took away, and they gave me all this. My aunt gave us, you know, brought us, you know, dresses, whatever, they dressed us. And uh, then she told me it was, wasn't style. My whole knee was out. In Germany, they used short dresses that time. That's why I thought they took away that it was, and I had to work for this to sell apples and, and to make one dress because I didn't have more dresses. That's the one. Uh, the boat was very, 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 very bad. <laughs> they shaked us up. Because I couldn't eat. I was a very bad, bad rider. Me and my brother Aaron, we were a lot on the deck and we couldn't eat. The captain looked us up and he saw it every day when I go for food in the morning. And I just walked away and I didn't, I didn't take food. I just a little bit. I picked something I couldn't eat. It was very hard traveling to the United States. And, and when we arrived here, it was, it was you know, they, we, some rumors went that they were going to send us back. So nobody wanted to go back. We already were talking. But everybody would jump in the water, and so on and so on. It, it wasn't easy. Here we came, and my brother, who was uh, in the army, he bought the house. We got married. We went, one was married before Milchan. I was married after Mara, because we didn't have different relations, just whatever we had. And one of my aunt was a seamster, and she knew very nice how to sew. She, did, she made me a beautiful gown and for my sister. We have a wedding picture, you know, just a film, that the both girls sitting together, you know, the two brides and two boys. And we had the same family, and some, the rabbi was from my hometown, he came. And we lived in Williamsburg, and my brother bought a house there. And wh whoever came out from, the, uh, from Europe, they shipped it because it was one family house. Downstairs was like a large living room, dining room, and uh, the kitchen. And uh, every floor, three floors, had two bedrooms. So my sister uh, lived upstairs. I lived the first floor, she lived the second and third floor. Lived my brother through Ari, and then cousins came. Ari, my brother, when my, you know when they came, when we came out, the people in the shul they went to the Salem because my uncles were davening there. And one of the furrier called my brother. They didn't have no nothing skilled but to work. He took him in and he said, "I will teach you." He was a furrier. And uh, one brother took my uncle, uh, he had here in Borough Park, he was the only one from Shabbos Bakery, Goldstein Bakery, who took in another brother, Aaron, and he was working there. Every Friday he came to us for Shabbos to Williamsburg. And every Friday he bought a bag like this tall, full with challah, cake, full. Every boy, uh, my brothers had friends, they always came to us, it was an open kitchen. And Friday night they came in and, you know, they were singing and, uh, you know, entertaining. So it was lively Friday night. Friday night, night yeah. And, and, and the, 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 in, beside that, we were baking. My sister baked very good, she used to bake. And uh, we all used it up. My husband made money, but nothing just for food then. Whatever came in, everybody had what to eat. It was like an open, open kitchen. 
we weren't interested to things, you know, like today. Was, was life in America good to you and your family? What, what sense you... Uh, um, was America good to you? Yes, no complaint. We didn't have uh, better left because it was already everything was gone. We had, we, the problem was we didn't take serious life here. We weren't anxious for money. Didn't interest me the money. You understand? People were uh, maybe more who came out later, they knew the value of the money. We didn't know. We had opportunities, opportunities, you name it. Uh, one guy came in, they wanted to sell us uh, stocks. You know, we didn't, we didn't touch it, you know. And a lot of things, but we, the launderette machines opened. My uncle and aunt said, children, do something, go this, go that, you know. We weren't so anxious. We weren't alert that we need money. We didn't need how much we had. We just used it for food and for everything else. When, as your children were growing up, did you tell them your stories? Yeah, little by little. Uh, I, when I was pregnant with my son, I started to work, and then I couldn't take the trains. You know, I wasn't having such a pregnancy. I, like my brother said, everything was smelled for me. I couldn't go the trains. He said smell. He said he's here in the United States so many years. He never felt smell. Anyway, that stopped the working. You know, I was in the house, and uh, I just was was keep up. The, the companies, you know, whatever they, we had. The family was nice to us. They weren't, one of the uncle was rich. The rest came out later, you know, that they didn't have so much like one of them who came much before. Did you tell your children your ex about your experiences while they were growing up? Uh, yeah, little by little, I always told them things, but uh, when they were young, they didn't understand what I'm talking to them, you know. They couldn't understand what I was eating or I was fasting or, or anything that happened. They couldn't understand. Later on, when they already grew up, they were busy with themselves. So, but it came pace off. We always worked together with the children, even when they got married. And always we bore that pace off. We read the stories, what went on. So we always said, by us, it was even worse. The same thing, teachable or, or other things when they passed. So we, had, we, we have our own stories, you know. We went through a lot, all over. And it uh, was very hard from us. We were uh, all together. Then my husband uh, went to business with uh, two brothers. Tape number six, December 5th, 1995. Interview with Mrs. Irene Rosenbaum. Did your sister Leia ever talk about her children, the two children that were with her, that were with her and taken away in Auschwitz, and the baby that was born? Yes, yeah, she always talked about. She never forget about them. She always talked about them, and she had only one son in Israel. He always wanted to come to the United States. She didn't trust them. She was afraid that if he comes here. We we'll never go back. She didn't let go out. She had uh, uh, four grandchildren. She, what, what do you think gave her the courage to continue, to, to survive in Auschwitz uh, and afterwards? Uh, she, she got married in Czechoslovakia uh, 
to a married man who, who his wife was a sister to one of my uncle's sister. They knew each other. And uh, life went on. He, she wasn't alone. She knew already her husband is gone. She already, and then they had this only one child. That was her whole living, the, this child. Very nice boy. He remarried afterwards, and he has children now. He, he married a child. I went to the wedding because I wanted to. My sister already passed away, so I figured I, I want to be there. If she's not there, at least I should be there. But she always talked about it. Matter of fact, how many times I went there, she always took out the pictures, and she said to me, remember the, the kids? She always talked about it. One, uh, one aunt was by her from here, and she went, she took away the picture from her. She didn't want to, she should have it. That's she why. was afraid that she was fixating on the picture. Yeah, so that's why I have the picture, because she gave it to me here. Could you tell me, while you, as you were raising your children, what values did you try to teach them? Like what? What was important for you to give to your children or teach your children? They should be good to people, and they should be honest, and they should appreciate each other. That's all, and then they, you know, they had children, and I always told them not to have big eyes, but it doesn't help, whatever they want to do, they do. And we are not to Europe sometimes, you know, I told them, don't do this or don't do that. But uh, thank God they, they grew up and they married very nice. My son married a nice girl. He has a very nice family. He has three children. The big one goes in Colombia now. She, she goes for her master's. She's finishing this year, the master. She wants to be a hospital administrator. And then they have a son. He's going to Yeshiva University. The second year, he is um, in college. And then they have a daughter from 16 and a half. She goes to yeshiva. Thank God, very nice children, nice family. And we hope I will marry them all off. That's my, my hope. I should marry all of my children. How many I have, grandchildren, even, even the next generation, I don't mind, to enjoy them. That's my whole life. And my daughter also married a very nice Boy. What, what's your son and your daughter's name? My son is Arthur Rosenbaum, and his wife is Phyllis, and then is Sherry, the big one, and then Moisha, Mark, and, and Lisa, three, three children. And my daughter has one of the oldest Goldies. She married Rabbi Svick's son, and Shalamet, and then she has another married son, Benjamin, who was here now. He, he, he is married to Monsi, Englard girl, and then now, last year, married the third one, Miriam. He, she is married to, to Lövinger, Lövinger, very nice people here in Borough Park. I knew, knew them before. And they, now they will give, waiting for a baby, one of them and the other one. And the big one, Goldie, has two children. Are you afraid, do you think the Holocaust could ever happen here or could happen again? I don't think so. In a, such an educated world like here, America, can happen that. I don't think so. The people will let themselves to, to, to drag like they led in Europe. Europe was always afraid from, the, from here. They're not afraid, you know. They talk, talk back, like in Russia. 
They're afraid the Russian people open them out, not the United States, you know. And the same thing here, I don't think so, it will never happen this, because they wouldn't let themselves. No people would do, let themselves to drag like they did by us, like they would, would put together animals, cows or horses, and drag them. Whatever they want to, they drag us all over, the whole world. For one person, the whole world. Do you have any animosity to the Gentiles? What do you mean? Uh, uh, do you have any Gentile friends, or do you feel anger at the people that you grew up with? At home? Uh, but I grew up, I wasn't angered. No, we were, we were very close with the, with the Gentile. No anger, never. In the villages, I used to go visit the peasant people there. Matter of fact, they wanted to give me something to eat. They knew I'm not allowed. And when a neighbor said to, to my grandfather, she could have a little black bread. I loved the pumpernickel bread because she just bakes it, she said, in a separate dish, the bread, and she doesn't put nothing, just water. You know, I was a little girl, but anyway, no, we weren't against. But then the ghetto started then already, we saw that they didn't, they were afraid. They didn't hide people by us, nobody. Certain places they hide. A few people hide themselves in the bunkers in my town. And before the Hungarian came in, they, they shot them, you know, they, they find them. And, but uh, like this, we weren't, we weren't angered, you know, with the, with the Christian people. No, not at all. If you have one message to the world about your experiences, what would it be? Like what? If you have a message that you'd like to tell the world based on your experiences. I mean, they should, they should be more lenient to each other. They shouldn't be enemies. And that's the whole, whole problem all over the world. Like Israel, such a small country, and they're fighting and they're fighting for nothing. I was in Texas coming home from California. How big that is for hours I was traveling. And Israel has such a small country and they don't have place there to stay. Why they have to fight with, with such a poor people, such a uh, innocent people who never kills, never does anything. And, and, and that's what makes me anger, that they don't have enough, like Arabs how many land they have, why they don't work on it. They keep it up for nothing. And just they want from the Israel the lands. They deserve something also. After so many fights, after so many struggle, from way back, 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 they came to, to Israel and they had their own land. And now they took away and now want to take again. I mean, it's, it's, it's disgusting to, to listen what goes on there. Do you have any nightmares? Oh yeah, I sometimes a lot of times I'm home, home, not like I now my age. Always home, how I left, always. A lot of times I'm home with my parents, talking this over that over, a lot of times, lot, lot, lot. Do you do you have any nightmares from of what uh, what you saw at Auschwitz? Oh, if I don't mind myself, I, I have, I have. I keep it for myself, and I keep it, for, I'm busy during the day, I keep it forgetting it. But uh, certain things come back, and, and it's very hard to cope with it. The only thing, we shouldn't get sick, that's the whole thing. You know, you fell down, you break here, you break there, but. You could, you could fix it, but other sicknesses, I don't want to have it. It shouldn't ha happen to nobody. That's, all. That's what I'm, I'm praying. We shouldn't get sick. 
because we, we went through enough. So whatever life we have, we should remain healthy. And, and, and old age, we should go away. That's so. I'd like to thank you for sharing your story today. It was my pleasure too. And I, this way, at least I will remember, somebody will remember my story. Even my children will have more patience to look at it. They will know what's what, what. They're busy with their own life, so, you know, they always, it doesn't go everything so smooth. That's all. This is my grandfather, my grandmother, my, my father's parents. This picture was taken, I don't remember exactly, but must be 1936. They lived in a, a lava, they call it Vlachova. What were their names? Uh, the name was, uh, the grandmother was Sarah, and my grandfather was Mendel Azik. This is my grandfather and my grandmother from my mother's parents. The name is Dovid Gelbman, and my grandmother was Hannah Gittel Gelbman. They lived in Chart. This picture is my mother's family. My grandfather is there, Dovid, next to her is my mother in the kerchief, where next to her is a sister, and next to her is, is my grandmother's sister-in-law. Her name was Friedman, and, and next to her was uh, another aunt from Bilke. Her name was Stern, and next to it is another aunt who's still alive. She's 95 year old. She lives in Rishon Her name was Gelman Sprinzer. And the top was my uh, uncle, uh, uh, uncle, my pa mother's brother, youngest, his wife. She didn't come back. And then is the aunt there with my uncle who came from the United States to visit my grandfather. And then he met the whole family together. Over there is her, his wife, and behind is my sister, Leo, and my brother, Sammy, and, and another uncle and another cousin, and my father is there, and the other aunt, but uh, with my uncle, who never came back, Schleimi, and then is uh, Shmilu Rasner there, he passed away in the United States, and over there is Arthur Gellert, who just passed away. That was, he was a kid that time. And Where was this picture taken? This picture was taken in Chart. This is my mother, Rachel, and, and right to her is Yehidu, my brother, who was in Israel. He just passed away three years ago, and then next to her on the left is my youngest brother who went with my mother to Auschwitz, and the top on the right side is Leah, my sister, who passed away in Israel. She was married, and, and next to her is Miriam, who still is in Israel, and next to her on the left side, that's me, myself. That was taken much before the war. The left side is my brother, Yidl, who was survived from Auschwitz, and he was in Israel. He went through the war and everything, and now he just passed away a couple of years ago. Next to her is Pinchesheim, who went with my mother to Auschwitz. And this picture was taken at home much before the war. And next to it is my cousin, Rosenthal, girl. And next to her, the right side, my younger sister, Hannah Gitala. She went also with my mother to Auschwitz. That picture was found here in the United States by a family.
Yeah, this is my father, Moisture Katz. This, this was taken before the war. They sent it to here to United States, and here we find it by my brother who was here before the war. The right side, that's me, and the middle is Miriam, my sister, older sister, and next to her is Frida. They both live in Israel. Frida lived here in the United States with me, and we came out for a co good couple of years, and after they went to Israel to live, they took the children. They had already grown up children. Now they still live there. This, this is my sister Leia with her two children. They, this was made in, in Hus where she lived. And that next to her, that's myself. Winter in the snow. I went to visit her and then and, we and, made and this you're picture. On the you're on the right? I'm on the right side, the picture, that's me. And this picture was taken, that's my sister's two children who went away in Auschwitz with my mother. The, the right side is a girl. She was, I think so, five, five year old. And the ne left side is a boy. And their last name was? The, the, uh, the name was Einhorn. They lived at Hust. He was a furrier, the husband. This picture was taken in Germany before we needed to come to United States. That was the American people took the picture for, for the papers, for our papers to come to United States. Is that you? That's me, Irene Rosenbaum. Irene Katz, I forgot. My name was Katz that time. I was. This is the picture taken and piled up in after the survivors. Over there is my uncle. His name is Abram Gelbman. That's what he looked after right away the war. He's all the way on the left? He's on the left side, the first one. He's still alive. He's 85 years old, and he, he lost five children in the war, but a wife. He remarried, and he has two children, two girls. One has 10 children, and the other has seven children. And thank God they are together. This picture was taken in Israel for my son, Bal Mitzvah, for his son, and grandson. The left side is Miriam, my sister. Next to her, that's me. And the top of it is Yassi Rosenthal, a cousin. And next to her, Javi Rosenthal. And the, the white cap is my oldest brother, he, who was here in the United States, Sam Katz. And next to him is Aaron Rosenthal. And next to it is my sister Frida, and the top of us is Yidu Katz. That's my brother who passed away in Israel. And then next to it is Schmelke Rosenthal, and next to it is my brother Aaron. He lives here in the United States and just was there for a bar mitzvah and made the picture. This is a uh, my older sister, Miriam, next to it, that's me. And on top of it, Sammy, my brother from California. And then is Frida, my sister. And then is Yidu, who passed away. And then the right, the first one is Aaron. They all came to Bar Mitzvah to Israel, to my grandson. That's why we got uh, together. I wish they w someday we should all meet together, Israel and America together, all the sisters and brothers. Mrs. Rosenbaum, what, what is this a picture of? 
could you describe this picture to us? Oh yeah, that's my granddaughter. She just got, oh yeah. This is my granddaughter who got married in uh, December last year. And that's her, her husband, uh, Benzian Löwinger. And, and the right side is my daughter, Hedy. And the left side is my son-in-law, Schleimi. And, and next to it is, is Yumi, his wife, Malki, and the top is Yumi. And then is my son, a uh, grandson, Mark. And then is my husband there, and my son, Arthur, but his wife, Phyllis, and daughter, Sh Sherry, and Lisa, and next to it is Goldie's with her husband, and the granddaughter, and Moishi, and that's me next to my daughter, it's me. My name is Irene Rosenbaum. Next to me is my husband, Teddy, and he holds two great grandchildren. One is Rachel and one is Yehuda. And the left side is my brother, Srul. Tell him. My name is Srul Katz. I was under the Hungarian labor camp. <laughs> That's I survived uh, through the Russians in Budapest. My name is Joseph Kett. I'm a survivor of Auschwitz, Warsaw Ghetto, and Buchenwald, and Dachau. I'm Schleimi Gross. I'm their son in law. And I'm extremely proud of what they're doing. I think it's a heritage for our great-grandchildren. And uh, I think it should be obligatory for every child in the future to see what our heritage truly is, the good and the bad. I'm Hetty Gross. I'm the daughter. Uh, this is my parents. And I'm amazed that uh, we're all here after 50 years of the Holocaust survival. And especially since my whole family is from, which I think is very important to them and to all of us. Uh, I'm the daughter-in-law, Phyllis Rosenbaum. Mm -hmm. I'm Arthur Rosenbaum. I'm their son. I have with me my uh, part of my family, my wife Phyllis, my youngest daughter Lisa. Absent today is my oldest daughter Sherry and my son Mark. And we're here as witnesses to children of survivors of the Holocaust, and we're here so that future generations should know and should remember and should never forget again. Hi, I'm Lisa Rosenbaum. I'm the granddaughter. Goldie. Um, hi, I'm Goldie Zwick. My husband's not here, and these are my two kids. My she. Hi, I'm my she. Uh, I'm my she goes on the granddaughter. Oh. Hi, I'm Jimmy Gross. Um, my mother's Hetty Gross and my grandparents. It's always been a pr privilege. I always said it was always a privilege going to my bus and my grandparents to, to hear all the stories. And it was something uh, privileged to be growing up and uh, hearing everything that happened in the war from survivors. This is my wife, Martha. Hi, I'm Miriam Wollinger, and I'm granddaughter. Daughter of Hetty and Schlumber. Ben Lowinger, grandson and uh, son-in-law of uh, Hetty and Schlumber Gross. Anybody in there? Yeah, Don? Rachel. Thank you. Rachel. I want to thank you very much for the Spielberg organization, for the chance which they gave us that we should tell our life story. We hope. Mm. Anybody in the near, in a very near future or in the long run, when they see these things, they will remember that what when we went through, that it will never leave our mind, that we will die with these thoughts, whatever went. But let's hope that mankind will never ever find out that there was such, such horrendous stories in our lifetime. Thanks again. And good night.